Kathy is the executive director of our regional Spencer County Chamber of Commerce. We're very happy to have her. And she is going to thank you. Thank you. She is going to introduce our sponsors. We'd appreciate it if you would hold your applause until all the sponsors have been introduced. All right, I would have definitely left this job for Pat because she is fabulous with a microphone, but she is our very first sponsor, so I would very much like to thank her for her continuous um, support in body and spirit and mind and financially of our chamber, so appreciate that very much. <laughs> And along with that Emerald sponsorship, we have uh, American Electric Power and uh, a benevolent benefactor uh, gifted uh, table for the Spencer County Visitors Bureau. So we very much appreciated that as well. We've got um, Diamond sponsors, PSC and Perry County Memorial Hospital. And I don't even think, I have hardly talked to Hi, Brian. Hi. Hey, how are you guys? You, you missed those. It's been phenomenal. No, I said them quickly. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so welcome and thank you. Thank you very much. And PS, wow. say it again. <laughs> um, PSC, I know our friends right here. Yes, Darren, Wayne, thank you. Appreciate you all being here. Thanks. Um, and we have our Ruby sponsors. That is Southern Indiana Power. Thank you very much, we appreciate it. Uh, always wonderful supporters of the chamber as well. And our Mulzer family of companies. Back at that table, they're very quiet this evening. It's making me a tiny bit nervous because they're typically not. So I'm watching you guys. I'm side-eyeing you all night. And we have a, a wonderful, um, a variety of Sapphire sponsors. It was really fun to see who came in this year. Uh, Spencer County Leader, so we appreciate that very much. Uh, Trilogy Health Services uh, with our Woodmont campus and Scenic Hills Healthcare campus. Appreciate that very much. I'm losing Amber. There, oh yeah, she's helping. That's fabulous. What an awesome ambassador. Thank you. <laughs> and Kinsher's Equipment, just down the street from me. Near and dear to my heart, we appreciate Ken Shirts and all the support for community and chamber, so thank you very much. And Holiday World and Splash and Safari, thank you ladies for braving and being here. Thank you for representing, we appreciate it. And Spencer County Bank, talk to there Cindy, Kevin, Lisa, thank you all very much, we appreciate it. And Universal Design Associates, and if I've missed Brett or anyone from there, I'm sorry, but Thank you for being supportive and a sponsor. So, um, yes, thank you everyone for being here. And seriously, for coming out amongst the craziness of this week and this environment and the weather on top of it. So thank you very much. And I can tell you that my husband, who is in EMA services, he's the fire chief at Carter Fire, has said he will let us know if there is anything that we need to know on a timely basis. So he is uh, on, or I'm on call watching the phone and I know if there's a fireman, Lori, Lori, I lost you. One of his, one of the firemen are in here too. So if her pager goes off, we'll know. <laughs> I'm sure there are several in the room. So yeah, that's fabulous. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. All right, um, one of the things that we're talking about is that it is our, they say our 20th anniversary, but it's really the 20th anniversary of the Spencer County Regional Chamber of yes. Commerce, yeah. which happened um, 20 years ago. So before that, I know there's one person in the room that was there before when I was, and that's Jean Steinkamp. Is anybody else in the room that was on the Chamber of Commerce, you know, in the early years? Anybody else besides Jean? I'm fairly certain Jean even pulled you into this business here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. have decided that I must have been like 35 years old when I started with the Spencer Chamber of Commerce. And if we've only been here 20, that makes me 55. They've got, <laughs> you know, they've got it all wrong. <laughs> Anyway, we've been at it a long time, right, Jane? 
trying to get money, trying to get people, trying to like, unite communities, trying to get businesses, and uh, we're making headway. And we're really proud of what's happening and really proud of Spencer County. As long as we work together, we'll be okay, right? That's, That's right. what it is. Drop the egos and start really pushing everything together and things will happen. So at this time, we're going to introduce the chair, which is Kathy, and we've already introduced her. Once again, we're going to introduce the directors who come to the meetings and help us to make our great decisions. And uh, we'd like for them to stand and remain standing and then hold your applause until everyone has been recognized. Kathy Treader, Spencer County Leader in Ferdinand News, who is also our chair this year. Again, she decided to do it twice. God bless her. How about that? <laughs> Vice Chair Dave Hedge is not here. He is with Holiday World and Sebastian Safari. His wife is. Nell is representing him. She is with the, our museum. Secretary is Jeremy Kincaid from Kincaid Insurance. Standing. Treasurer is Michelle Thompson from Freedom Bank, who does a whale of a job for us. Yes, definitely. Tara Damon from Clark Deets is not here, but mm -hmm. she has been on the committee and we've had lots of meetings. Sharon Helso from AEP, I know she's here. Sharon has done a terrific job, thank you. Jim Ferguson from PSC, who rarely misses a meeting. Melissa Arno from the Spencer County Visitors Bureau. Don't believe she is here tonight. Yep, yep. She, she is, is here. Oh, yeah. Melissa, I missed you. She's been very quiet. Yes. <laughs> Who works greatly for Spencer County. Richard Rutherford from South Spencer School Corporation. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. here he's here. Uh, Rick, Rachel Goldsbury from Southern Indiana Power. Is not. She's not. out. Tyler Hurt from Spencer Industries. <laughs> Me. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Jean Steinkamp, retired business owner and community activist. <laughs> James Aldridge from Aldridge IT. <laughs> Jordan Sheets from MPW. And Rob Schulte from Key Associates. Everybody standing? Thank you all very, 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 very much. Thank you, thank you. It's a great group of people to work with. Um, they are energetic, they're enthusiastic, they speak up, and we have a few spats now and then, and everybody's still <laughs> friends, okay? So that's the way to do it. Also join me in thanking our executive director, Kathy's doing a wonderful job in growing our membership and being very visible in our community. She is the smiling face of the chamber. <laughs> Thank you. And at this time, I don't know if you all know, but we have chamber ambassadors, and you know, they're very active in our chamber, and really do a lot of, lot of good. So uh, they're here today helping us. They helped last night to set up, mm -hmm. and are always at ribbon cuttings and other chamber events. And once again, if you all would please stand, and then hold your applause until they have been recognized. Amber Brockreed from Scenic Hills Care Center. Amber's keeping tables. <laughs> Kenny Speed from DC mm -hmm. Broadcasting. Carolyn Braun from SERS. She's on vacation. She's on vacation. Yeah. Gay Ann Harney, City of Rockport. I didn't see her. Julie Collins from Woodmont Health Campus. Kyle Canarium, I saw him earlier getting a beer, didn't I? <laughs> I know. He's camping tonight, but he would have been. I saw him. <laughs> Christy Lee from Mutual oh. Home Insurance. Carrie Burke from Santa's Lodge. And Shelly Wilson from uh, LEDC. Shelby. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all. Really active about it. And Kathy is going to take over at this point. And uh, in. in uh, Ask the elected officials to stand. I am, but real quickly, I am going to say um, we did not have one of a, a fabulous ambassador listed. I think she is in the program, I hope. Uh, Miss Christine Schulte from MPW Services. And I know she's here somewhere. 
Oh, yes, yes, there she is. Oh, yeah. Jordan will joke about it, that she's this big compared to my giantness, so yes. <laughs> and she does a phenomenal job, so thanks for everything you do as well, Chris. Appreciate you. Um, we are going to, we would love to recognize our elected officials that we have in the room, and I believe, I know, uh, Representative Bacon is in the house, at least for six more months, <laughs> and he is retiring, yes, so we do appreciate how many years, Ron? I'm sorry, 10, 10 years of um, serving our community, so thank you very much for that, appreciate it. And yes, his lovely wife has supported him as well, Miss mm -hmm. Karen. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I don't even see Mr. Brown. Do we have any other elected officials? We're slim on them tonight, I believe. Who am I missing? Oh, Vic, I didn't even see you come in. Why, hello, sir. Yes, Mr. Politi is back there. Vic ser serves as our Spencer County prosecutor. So we appreciate that very much. Thank you. Okay, we're missing. And his lovely wife, yes. Miss Zippolidi is so sweet, and she is a doll. We do appreciate Jan Schuler Hicks for being here on behalf of Senator Braun. So thank you very, very much. We appreciate you being here. And we're excited to have uh, Senator Braun. We're having a breakfast with um, Senator Braun April 3rd at Santa's Lodge, so be watching for more information on that, okay? Now, am I missing anyone else? <laughs> no, no, awesome. Okay, what's, what's next, Pat? She's the boss, and I'm gonna tell you that, she is the boss around here on these nights. <laughs> Kathy T and Kathy R are going to present our awards tonight, and Kathy Treader will say a word about each of the honorees as they are presented. You want to sit there? Or do you I'm want going to stay right here. Okay, perfect. Okay, awesome. All right, Kathy. Well, you know what? I, I have to thank this person back here. Mary James has been phenomenal. She, <laughs> she's an honorary chamber ambassador. I, she's always an ambassador for our community. She is with Spencer County and Perry County uh, Community Foundations. And we happen to be so fortunate, for those of you that don't know, uh, AEP graciously provides us with the Lincoln Commerce Center, which gives uh, synergy to the LADC um, organization, the Chamber, um, SIRS, Foundation. Habitat for Humanity, and then the Spencer County Community Foundation. So um, we are kind of like a crazy little nut house in there at times, but it is so fun because we absolutely have each other's backs and we help each other out. And it's just, I, I can't tell you how much I truly enjoy going to work most days. <laughs> so, yes, all right. I just noticed a horrible omission on recognizing chamber board members, Tom Brown, who is not here, who's county oh, commissioner. Mm -hmm. He's a official yeah, member, but he, we should have recognized him. So I was yes, just standing yes, here yes. feeling guilty as I, that hit me that I didn't put him in the yep. script. Okay. The first award, and I want you to do the announcing, and then I might say something and you, about these And people. you might add two cents worth, huh? And I'd like to add my two okay. cents, yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, the first award of the evening is, and I tell you what, do you want to sure. grab them, or, yes? Actually, you want to recognize a couple of folks there? Well, we can do that first. Okay, yep, that? sure, absolutely. We are going to recognize a couple of anniversaries that we know of, if, we said this last year as well, if you are celebrating a special year with your business, please let us know. We want to celebrate you and recognize you, so please let us know. So we are going to begin with a phenomenal business who has been in business for 10 years now. Super excited, every time I go in there, I wanna work there. They're all so cool. It's a really hip environment, and if you've never been there, you're missing out. Uh, Midwest Graphics in Rockport. Very much appreciate you, Josh and Chelsea. Hey, we have something for you. <laughs> One of you. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for everything you do in the community. Thank oh, you. Awesome. 
And we have our beloved AEP family who celebrated 40 years in our community. So we very much appreciate that. And I don't know if I saw Laura Harmon sneak in or not. Is she not? No. no. All right. We have Martin Searn Insurance. And this is of debate. Yeah. Kathy swears that it's 125 years of celebration for them. They're like, no, I think it's just 100. So <laughs> My research showed. And she is a research queen. 25 years. So they weren't sure. Yes. But yeah. I'm pretty positive. But so we will gift that to them. This yes, yes. Melissa, take it to your hubby. Yeah, please gift Tell it to your husband. He is he babysitting? <laughs> yeah. That's what I figured. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we have our first. Yes. Yep. All right. So we are going to begin with board member of the year. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate every single board member, and I truly mean that. Um, but I tell you, there is, this past year especially, but for years of dedication and service to the chamber board, um, giving of time and talents through even mission work uh, through his church and in other countries um, overseas. He's been a dedicated employee of PSC for over 11 years and even prior consulting uh, with PSC as an um, engineering consultant before that. But I can't thank Jim Ferguson enough for all the ribbon cuttings, the morning brews, the after hours, the um, unending support that he offers us. So thank you very much, Jim Ferguson, board member of the year. Yes. Come on up, come on up, Jim. I say, how much I appreciate having him on the board. A steady presence, not a big talker, but <laughs> he will give an opinion when it's necessary. Here you go. Thank Open you. it up and check it out. I know, there they're beautiful, go. yes. Thank you, Thank um, you Jim, for all Jim, you do. Hang on, Jim. And we, <laughs> we will get pictures. Please award winners, all of you certificates and award winners, if you would please stay after for just a minute. We'll try and gather as quickly as possible uh, and grab a few pictures collectively. Um, so yeah, because it's really hard to get these crazy awkward positions. And there are some positions like on bodies like mine you don't want to get. So <laughs> some of those are not, yeah, not friendly. <laughs> that one up since he's not here. But oh, well, we'll talk about it? Or no. We can talk about it, yeah. or we'll just yeah, leave it yeah, right there. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So we have an award that we know um, the person's not here, a Community Service Award. We had a few people that said we have an amazing VSO, a veteran service officer that has um, come to our courthouse and our community. Uh, Butch Meredith has just put his heart and soul into this job for three years and continues. He says he loves it. He can't wait to get to the office. He's helped over 600, 3,000. I don't know. That's really terrible. I can't think of the number, and those are really different numbers. But I, I, <laughs> he is, is passionate about helping the amount of uh, veterans in our area. So we truly appreciate Butch and all he does. And he's being a champion for the census. Please encourage people to fill out those cards, go online, whatever, however they're going to do it. Please, it's important to our county and every county uh, to be counted in the census. So, Butch Meredith, we appreciate him very much. And I will say on that note as well, the next recipient is not here, and I only let him get away with it because it's his son's birthday. And he said his son would not be any too happy if he and his wife came here, which they did want to. Um, he actually had forgotten it's his birthday and he had RSVP'd. <laughs> I said, you're such a man. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean anything by that, guys. <laughs> but um, for the past, since December of 2006, uh, Jaws Collision Center opened. So after 13 years of perseverance, dedication, building his own uh, business and image and has gone into the community. If you haven't been to the Santa Claus Christmas Parade, he has the most phenomenal, giant um, Santa, yes. And this past year, what, Melissa, it like 
rained snow everywhere as well, so it was pretty awesome. And he's um, gifted his time and talents with the Casa auction uh, with a Santa and I think a golf cart. So just when you get a business owner that's doing really, really well and putting himself out into the community, it's pretty phenomenal. So um, Jaws and Jim Allen Wagner is our uh, Horizon winner for this year. So we appreciate him. All right. Do you want to say more about this one, or would you like me to say a few words? It'll give it away as soon as I yeah, even start. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, our nonprofit member of the year. We have some pretty amazing nonprofit groups in this county, but I would love to. Um, celebrate and honor one that has enjoyed their own celebration this year, uh, this past year of 40 years of service to the community uh, through food blessings, baby shop, beautifully put together store. I think the shoe area is called DSW and the baby shop is Toys R Us. I don't know. <laughs> She's got some, you know, names that uh, associate with it. Uh, the, a phenomenal director has been there for probably four years, about the same amount of time that I've been with the chamber. Um, they do their back to school bash. Um, Which is phenomenal. Yes, it's a phenomenal organiz or, uh, organized event for South Spencer School Corporation back to school. Um, they offer job assessments and resume building to help uh, lead to self-sufficiency. And I just can't say enough about the good works that the organization does. Christian Resource. Center, <laughs> come on up. That's right. <laughs> and I know you have a wonderful board, but Dee, you're such a huge asset. You've done such a magnificent job. She has. She's been phenomenal. You go remember after we want to get everybody's picture. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Bless you, Dee. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and I think we are going to move on to Entrepreneur of the Year, which I love. One of these days I'm going to get James to help me out with this. We're going to have an amazing Entrepreneur Center. That's on the radar, you guys, is to have an Entrepreneur Center, isn't it, Wayne? We've been talking about this for years, so we're going to. Um, we definitely love to help our entrepreneurs and small businesses in the area. We can connect with resources with Indiana Small Business Development, um, this SBA. There are just so many. And there is a dictionary of acronyms that I can get for you. But yeah, that's a private <laughs> joke, yeah. There's so many out in the we world. Um, this entrepreneur realized dreams do come true. Uh, Loving, you can just see the passion um, that the, the business that started brings to her life and she brings it to others. It's been five years ago uh, when a local bread, um, born and bred Spencer County resident, created an amazing dream uh, realization, adding a fabulous uh, event coordination, um, weddings, um, all kinds of fun things happen out at uh, this place. And when she added to her team a fabulous event coordinator, and her husband is an amazing partner with her, uh, she, she creates support and wants others to be supportive and she loves to reach out. She's doing community events at her place, and that's, um, there's a Galentine's, which is my favorite. If any of you don't know Galentine's, y'all need to Google it later. Leslie Nope may have started it, but it's super awesome at this event place. And um, GNOs, which are girl not, Girls Nights Out, we need much more of those, by the way. And uh, a summer and spring market, very first fork to farm, uh, Fork to farm, farm to fork. Farm to fork. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I have not even had one drink tonight, folks. <laughs> the very first farm to fork will be this summer, and we just look for more events. We had an amazing chamber picnic this past year. We'll continue to have those if she'll have us. We just can't th say enough how proud we are of Jenny uh, Wilkerson and her team at Corner House Bed and Breakfast and Event Barns. <laughs> We thank you. We thank you for the great place. <laughs> All right, I'm turning the mic over for the last one. 
Okay, and I didn't prepare a bunch of stuff, but I gotta tell you, I am so impressed with this company. Now I wanna see what the thing is called. The Business of the Year. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity because my daytime hat and evening hat and weekend hat is journalist. So I had the opportunity to visit this company in Spencer County and go, oh my God, I can't believe there's a company like this in Spencer County. It's amazing. They do wonderful things way beyond my pay grade to understand. Just a really fascinating and wonderful company and we are so happy they are here and that would be Thermwood. I just learned that Thermwood has more patents for CNC routers alone than any other CNC router facility Combined. Facilities combined. 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 Jason says, if it's on the internet, it must be true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for everything oh, that Thermwood has done for our community. Oh. 50 years. They just had an amazing celebration too this past year. 50 years. Okay. All right, Pat. You're back up. All right. I think. At least for a minute, maybe. <laughs> 7.15. We're almost on time. Yes. And uh, congratulations to everybody. We really are proud of everybody. Um, so, I'm going to say wait. quick before. I'm sorry. I know. I just want to keep talking, don't I? Uh, I do want to say a quick, and I will really try and keep it quick. Um, kind of a brief state of the chamber. We have had uh, uh, some fabulous ribbon cuttings, grand openings, new businesses. Um, again, we're continuing to offer support. We want to be a resource along with our LADC partners for uh, entrepreneur roundtables and um, help them to develop what they need in their dream business or their hopeful business or maybe it's even realizing, oh shoot, I, this really is not uh, for me. Um, hopefully not, but there are some of those realizations as well. We uh, are partnering, and I have to, I just have to give thanks to over and over. Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, it might be a minute. <laughs> um, I have to give thanks to Valerie Schmidt and LEDC and um, the support that they're giving her. And Shelby is amazing asset to the organization as well. But Valerie is um, an amazing partner to have for community development, for workforce development, for education support, um, over and over. We're going across the hall, hollering across, texting each other. So I really do appreciate the efforts that LEDC's doors have opened and Valerie is working uh, right beside, hand in hand. We just frolic around the building sometimes, don't we, Mary? Oh, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> so I really, really do appreciate her and all the efforts that we're putting forward together. And it really will make a difference in our county uh, working for the chamber and, and the economic development arm to be working together. So we very much appreciate that. A few things we are working on. <laughs> a few things we are working on, um, business retention and expansion. Valerie and I, I should say the chamber, and I'm sorry, I'll keep saying her name, the chamber and LEDC has uh, put together, we're funding this, so we're putting money into this to make um, a strong effort to get into our businesses more often. Uh, BRE is business retention and expansion, and we want to know how, I think this may be fading, but I have a loud voice. Uh, we want to know how we can help you, where your business is at, what our current economic climate is, and we want to know what do you foresee your business being another five, ten years? How can we help that? And what can we do to help the current economic climate and what we want it to be in the, in the future? So that's one of our, we've pulled in community partners um, of all kind, kinds into that BRE. Just started, Purdue is facilitating for us and we very much appreciate that. Um, we have also created in this past year the Spencer County Alliance, which is also very exciting. It brings together Chamber, LADC, uh, Spencer County Tourism, and Community Foundation. And it, feel, it felt like there were a lot of silos all over the county being worked together, God bless you, 
uh, uh, being worked in their own realm. And we're like, we're working on that. Are you working on that? Oh, maybe we should work together to do that. You know, hashtag stronger together. So the Spencer County Alliance came together and after we formed, talked about marketing the county, how can we further marketing? And then we said, one of our members said, Tara Dammon, one of our board members said, um, hey, did you know there is a grant that we can apply for with USDA and it's for rural economic development and it's called the Ready Grant. We worked our tails off for eight days, I wanna say, and applied for the grant. We're awarded, not only awarded, we were the only county in the state of Indiana to be awarded the Ready Grant. So we were very proud of that. <laughs> Shows what working together can do. Yep, I think this may be dying. Can you guys still hear me? It's okay. Anyway, shows what working together can get accomplished. So we're very, um, very much in the thick of that. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, well, yeah, that one's a lot louder. We're in the thick of that. Uh, we're focusing on housing, uh, community of our place, and then economic development, of course. So excited about that. And we are really super excited about working together. And this is why I'm gonna have to apologize at this point. I haven't even said anything about it yet. Our third speaker, Blair Milo, called me this morning Kathy, it's Blair. I'm like, oh no, I already know where this conversation's going. No, she doesn't have anything associated with the C word. It is uh, just, oh, it is actually a cold. She has a cold <laughs> that she's fighting. She really is a C word, but it's not the scary one right now. Um, she's fighting a cold, and she did not want to foster any kind of coughing. She couldn't really talk, so. She said, I said, we'll give you a pass, but we're gonna have you back, don't you worry. So I gave her a few ideas, we chatted for just a little bit, and um, she really, truly sent her apologies. Uh, she was super excited about staying in Santa Claus, Indiana at Santa's Lodge, so uh, she can't wait to come back and visit and go to the Village and Museum. She's pretty excited. I said, oh, between Wendy and uh, Perry County, and we'll, oh, we'll just create a whole uh, agenda for you. And on that note, we're working with Blair and Wendy Rich. Thank you for being here, my dear friend over in Perry County, the chamber director, uh, another partner in crime with me in our smaller rural chambers. And then Tara's like a big teacher, like uh, Nancy Eckerly up in Jasper. It's phenomenal to have such a good network. Um, but we're super excited to be working on this 21st century talent region designation with Pike County, Dubois County, Orange County, Crawford County, and Perry County. So it is exciting to see these six counties come together and, and it's almost like we're asset mapping at this point and what can we do to make ourselves str self stronger as a region to attract talent, not steal from county to county, but let's look outside of Indiana and attract, it, attract those um, employees in the proposed 1 million employees that we're gonna need by 2030. It's a lot of people. That's a lot of jobs coming in, a lot of people. We don't wanna just keep fostering a, an environment of job hopping. We wanna bring in folks. So we're working on that. It's an exciting adventure to be working together. Our friends over at Southwest Indiana Chamber are working on their Talent 2025, which is very uh, similar, if not basically the same. So we're uh, watching what they do as well and, and getting some great tips from them. But um, again, Southwest Indiana Chamber is also a phenomenal partner that we have next door. So really appreciate that as well. Events, we have events continuing on all the time. So please be mindful of your emails. If you're not getting emails, let me know because they do come out. So please let me know if you're not seeing when chamber events are our morning brews, which are phenomenal networking events, um, our after hours events, our golf outing, which is coming up May 8th, if you guys couldn't tell in the back of the room, uh, our summer picnic will be, and it's uh, then just things like conversations with Senator Braun and um, office time with uh, Congressman Bouchon and on and on. So we want to bring value to every bit of the county, our chamber members most especially though. So I have to thank all of our chamber members so much for supporting the efforts that we do because we are fully funded, besides maybe a little side events, 
through um, your dollars. So thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. I'm going to now give you a microphone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we will move on now um, to the evening of uh, speakers. Yep. But first, I want to say that behind every successful person is someone else who helps them succeed. And it was the reason I mentioned Ron Bacon's wife, because I know how much that means to have somebody to back you up and realize you're going to be away from home and you're going to be busy and people are going to be calling you and grabbing you. So before I introduce the speakers, I want to introduce somebody that is really dear to my heart. There are just some people in the world that you meet and you really like. And at one point, Sue Elsperman came and we had breakfast at Denny's, and she asked me if I would be her treasurer for her campaign. I went back and talked to Will, and he was very generous in saying that he would, that would be fine. You know, it was a political thing, but if I felt like that's what I wanted to do, that was fine. So that's what I did. And every Sunday evening, almost every Sunday evening, we would meet in Jim and Sue's home in Ferdinand to do some, you know, brainstorming and work. And um, it, it was a great five people, right? And we're still friends, even though we don't see each other that often. And I really miss those Sunday evenings, particularly because the one person who was there was Sue Elsterman's husband. Did y'all know she had a husband? <laughs> So behind every successful woman is a wonderful man, too, you know? Right, guys? Yes, yes. And so stand up, Jim. I think he's going to do more than stand up. He's a great educator in his own right. Um, just a wonderful person to be around. He'd like to get an Airstream trailer and go touring, but Sue's too busy, so I keep offering. I mean, you know, I'm available, right? <laughs> but the one Sue thing I remember so, so well of those Sunday evenings was, you know, Sue's really enthusiastic, and she's out there. Right, Sue? Right, Jim? Yep. And so Sue would get all excited and start into some kind of May I call it a rant? <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, this quiet voice over there would say, Susan? <laughs> and all of a sudden, we'd stop and think, you know? And I never will forget that, Jim. That was just a great thing. You know, there was no yelling or screaming or anything. It was just a quiet Susan. So I was just in Florida for two months. Everybody swore I wouldn't make it for two months. They said I wouldn't be able to stand it, but I did. And they were there for an evening, and they called me. That's how nice they are. And said, you know what? We're going to have an affair. Oh, my goodness. Was it an affair? Um, for people from Indiana, right, that support Ivy Tech. And I learned a lot about Ivy Tech, a lot that we all ought to know. I mean, I think, you know, I just believe, you know, I spent about five months in Alabama, and it convinces me, anybody here from Alabama? It convinces me more and more and more of the great importance of education. That is the key, I think. I think it's the key. And um, when I see young people trying, but having no chance, no chance, and I think Ivy Tech gives some of those kinds of kids the chance to get started, just to get a start. And that's what a lot of those young people in, in Alabama need. They need somebody to just get them started, you know, whether that's in the military or at Ivy Tech. They can't go to UAB. They can't go to, um, what's the other one, Auburn. They can go to a community college, and they can get a start, and they can see what education does for them. So um, I was really impressed because the home we visited was a wonderful couple from Indiana who spend a lot of energy, time, and money to give scholarships to young people from Indiana in Ivy Tech. And those two young people spoke, and I was so impressed, so impressed. They both said there's no way they could have gone straight to a four-year college. 
but now they have started on the path and they will both be very successful. I was just so impressed with them. So anyway, thank you, Jim. I'm going to introduce my dear friend, Sue Elsferman, who you know is the former Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Indiana and currently serves as president of Ivy Tech. She's going to speak first, right? And then um, I will introduce Tara now. So I am going on 89, even though I said I was 55, I lied. <laughs> Um, and it's hard for me to, this is just too hot for old people. We need a step here. Whoever's in charge of this place, get a step. <laughs> Tara is the president and CEO of the Southwest Indiana Chamber of Commerce, and she came here this evening to speak and to share the podium with Sue. So welcome both of these wonderful women to Spencer County. <laughs> Two handsome young men to come up here and pull this podium down. And there's only two. There they are. Look at these two handsome young men. Let's see if they can do this. We'll get some, just, if you can just take it down to the side. Got it. I'm going to hold the water. Got it. That's a good idea. Because we're going to sit down. That's right. Watch this top come off. All right. Terrific. What if that top comes off? Thank you, Mark. Jim. And yeah. the truth is, if anything ever happens like to me, part. Jim's married. Pat, I can tell you that. You heard it here first. There may be something that happens to me now, so you'll know why. <laughs> but thank you, Pat. We did have some great times. And before I get started, I just have to do one more shout out. Uh, Representative Bacon, we started a journey more than 10 years together uh, on that state rep journey. And I want to thank you and Karen for the amazing service you've given to state of Indiana. You will not find a harder working, more dedicated state rep. but the other counties around the state of Indiana as well. And understanding the challenges we were facing, even in pretty good economic times as things were getting better and better. And yet, employers couldn't find skilled workers and wages, wages and family incomes weren't where we wanted them to be. So as I made choices about where did I wanna go, Ivy Tech was a special place. It really was, as Pat said, um, there are many students that are privileged, if you will, if you want to talk about privilege, if you want to talk about growing up in good families where you know they're going to go on to college and they'll have the ability to pursue whatever education or whatever potential they have. But there are many students, there are many young people, and there are many adults where they've never had that opportunity. So as I got to Ivy Tech, I say I came because of workforce, I'm staying there and will be there a long, long time because of the lives a place like Ivy Tech changes. But, and I have my Ivy Tech table, Ivy Tech Evansville over there, so thank you for being here tonight. They're wonderful. But uh, you heard mentioned those million jobs. There are a million jobs over the next 10 years that we need to be filled. Over half of those, they, they project 60% or more will require a post-secondary degree or credential of some type, some type. Now that doesn't necessarily mean a four-year degree. Four-year degrees are terrific, but there's also all those short-term credentials like cybersecurity, make 80 or $100,000, that's not so bad. In fact, out of a Muscatica Cyber Academy, we had the first student make six digits coming right out of a Cyber Academy. 
That's, those are tremendous software development, all the industrial maintenance, many, many areas that are, are great income. But those opportunities are so critical. And when we talk about, yes, we do want to attract more people to Indiana, but if we can't skill up the workforce we have, we can't expect to have the kind of incomes and successful communities that we want. And oh, shame on us if we have to import all the talent and Hoosiers stay in low, low paying jobs. So there's a lot of work to be done here. It's not just ID Tech by any means, it's all of our institutions. And I want to tell you, I live by the Lumina 60% goal. How many know what the Lumina 60% goal is? Okay, I got a couple of them. They, they better know. <laughs> we project, and, and Lumina did the research that if we were going to have a successful community, state, nation, we were going to need 60% of our workforce to have a credential by 2025. 60% of some kind of post-secondary credential by 2025. Anybody want to guess where Spencer County is today? How many think it's about 50%? Raise your hands. How many think it's about 40%? Raise your hands. How many think it's about 30%? Raise your hands. How many think it's 20%? It's actually about 25%. If you add a few, you might get close to 30. Um, we've got a long way to go. We've got a long way to go. And if you think about it, a generation ago, you could have a good middle class income with a high school diploma. That's just not true anymore. So we have to go in thinking, and poor Jim gets to hear this all the time, that we have to do everything we can in high school to ensure our students in high school get at least that first head start, a first credential if possible, which, oh, by the way, in almost all of our high schools, if we're very intentional, your sons and daughters could get their first year at least of high school. That's called the transfer gen ed core. Every school in the state has to accept it. That's a pretty cool public, public colleges, universities have to accept it. So that's a very cool thing. $25,000 minimum, yep. wherever you go in the state. Um, but if they're not going into, in fact, those are the students we have to find those who don't necessarily know where they're going. We've got to ensure they get a first credential. That could be a welding credential, which is a great start. Industrial maintenance, software development, um, CNA towards nursing, LPN. Think about all those things so that they have that first first tier or two up on the ladder. So that's at the high school, but at the post-secondary, when you think about adults, how many adults, how many people do you know that aren't where they want to be in life or aren't bringing in the kind of income that can sustain a family well? Well, in Indiana, we've got great programs, and our governor's done a beautiful job, and our general assembly's done a great job with programs like Next Level Jobs. Yeah which are almost 100 credentials that can be earned for free to anybody, whether they go to Ivy Tech or Vincennes, either one is an option. So there are opportunities to go. And then the, the last piece that I'll speak in terms of workforce, and I've got employers in the room, we more than ever need employers to come on board and help encourage your own employees to go back. And you know who they are, they may be the administrative assistant, they may be the business clerk, they may be someone who's working in manufacturing, they may be at Thermwood on the front line somewhere, uh, building some of those great machines. But we've got to have those individuals come back and they need encouragement because if you're working 50 or 60 hours a week, you may be getting by, but that's not the future. And we've got to encourage those individuals back. That may mean offering tuition reimbursement. That may mean um, being there and supporting them and encouraging them and helping them get to that next spot. There are, in our communities, if we want them to succeed, we all have to be a part of helping people move up because it does matter. And it will bring the entrepreneurs to your community and it will attract the next industry to your town. But without the talent, you can't get there. And the homegrown talent, what motivates me is making sure Hoosiers 
are the ones who have those opportunities. So at ID Tech, that's where we're focused, but as a state, our role overall is to make sure that we are preparing the state for a future that can be successful. And I'll just mention just one other thing that we, I sit on the governor's workforce cabinet along with the other uh, Vincennes University and CHE, the Commission for Higher Education, Department of Workforce Development, um, Blair's group, the IEDC as well. And we, are, we have to think about where is the state going and how do we prepare it. We know that giving our young people uh, the ability to see careers that are in our community are critical. So at Ivy Tech, we have pulled together, and this will be the first time it's done to this degree anywhere in the country. We studied best practices nationally of two-year and four-year schools. How do you help ensure that that student who comes in for a degree is ready for a career when they leave? So we have been able to bring $15 million of funding together through the Lilly Endowment, Fairbanks, and another a, a number of different donors, some individual donors who felt so strongly about it, to be able to do what we call our Career Coaching and Employer Connections Initiative, where every, here's the goal, every one of our students will have a career plan that parallels their own academic plan. In their first credit hours with us, they'll have a resume and they'll be on LinkedIn, they'll be meeting with employers, and by the time they hit their first year between 30 and 45 hours will have an internship or apprenticeship or something where they've been out working and that they'll be workforce ready when they leave us. So we say that we'll be the best place to launch your career, whether that means going into the workforce immediately or going on to IU or Purdue or USI or wherever they're going next to finish a bachelor's degree. But that's how committed we feel to ensuring that our students have the kind of life skills, the kind of work skills, the professional skills they need to be successful when they leave us. So if Indiana is going to succeed, if Spencer County is going to succeed, if Southwest Indiana is going to succeed, talent is going to be the differentiator. And there's no easy way to get there. We're thankful for South Spencer schools and North Spencer schools. You are blessed to have strong school systems. They're doing their part, but we have to ensure that our students are going further than uh, a high school diploma, that they are gaining that post-secondary credential and that we're supporting all of our community in moving forward. So, Tara. This personality deserves her own microphone, so. Oh, yes. Okay, oh, good. Okay, <laughs> good. Dueling microphones, huh? So, Tara, now it's your turn. Thank you. Uh, and I will try to follow on that on, the, on your, your comments because uh, I do head up the Southwest Indiana Chamber of Commerce. I'm a new Hoosier. I'm almost two years in the state, so I'm going to call myself a Hoosier as soon as I get over that but you're from, line. You're from the good I state, Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, Iowa. So that's, that's almost like a Hoosier. I, I was going to say. That's right. I'm an import from Iowa, so I'm helping, yep. I'm helping move that count up. Good. But it's great to be here. And um, I do have an organization that is that is couldn't be any more deeply in the same space. So, you know, Southwest Indiana Chamber represents employers throughout this region, including many employers here in Spencer County. And I will uh, take a moment to say, you couldn't have a better exec than this woman sitting right here. And uh, <laughs> thank you, though. If you're ever in Indy with her, everyone knows her, so you're getting great representation up there. And uh, that is true for Wendy and uh, many other professionals in the room, including some other folks who attend the Southwest Indiana Chamber of Board Meetings on a regular basis, Kyla and others. So I feel like I'm talking to a room that has a little sense of what the Southwest Indiana Chamber is about, but I'll give you a quick thumbnail. We're really very much about paying attention to this region's economy. Everything we do is filtered through, are we helping the economy to go this way or not? And if we're not making the economy more resilient, uh, more likely to grow and more able to have a, a bright future, then we try not to do it. So we've taken some things off the table uh, because we need to give our focus to uh, talent, especially. So as we work with the employer community, we're trying to step up to some of the things Sue referenced specifically. We're trying to help our employer community see that it's in their enlightened best interest to help their employees uh, find time to get that next credential because no employer needs employees that uh, aren't able to contribute and be productive as the, after 10 years of service because they have a loyalty relationship. And so it's in everyone's best interest to take advantage of 
these tools and these opportunities because the world out there is changing so fast and it's shocking. Um, you know, what we think we know when we leave a front-end loaded education, which most of us got, including me, went to high school, went to college, went to graduate school, and that's like, oh my God, I'm done with college. You know, I'm doing more work. That is no longer true. We've got to be educating ourselves day in and day out. And I do think there's a little glimmer of opening in our employers community really understanding that uh, we're all in this together. And uh, we need our K-12 partners to do their part. And they do a wonderful job in this state. I've worked in five states in my career, and I've got to say I'm in a state that I feel like values education more than any other state I've been in, so I'm proud to make the move here for that purpose. But I think that our work as an as a association of employers and other civic interests, uh, we are spending a great deal of time uh, languaging and spending time helping our employers um, look at best practices and where they're engaging in a best practice that's working, taking it to scale. So I'll just give you an example of that. Um, some of our bigger employers, Toyota, Barry, Alcoa, you know them all, have been working together on how they can um, design a way that those employers as a group can uh, basically teach a curriculum in their respective employment places that helps their employees get credentials. And they're doing this together because they know that someone might go to work for Toyota, they might move to another place. That's all right. If they stay in our region and make moves, we benefit as Hoosiers. We need our employees to want to build their careers in this state. So much like Sue described uh, her interest in how Indiana frames itself, we hope that Southwest mm -hmm. Indiana really is the place that students can plan on starting a career and building a career. They may not all stay here forever, but if we, if we can earn that reputation, then we'll get more people to choose to come here and start their careers as well. So one of the things we've been doing, and Kathy made a reference to it, thank you, is we've been working with our partners in economic development in um, United Way and others to say, what are the things that most matter for Southwest Indiana? And we've drilled down to, we've got to grow our population. And that means fewer people going out, because we can't, we can't have a brain drain and, and make any progress. As a, as a greater region, we've literally not grown in 20 years. We might think we have, because someone moved here or there, but as a region, we have been flatlined for 20 years. So, we probably don't want to spend another 20 years doing the same thing. So we're looking very intensely on how we can, as a region, grow our population. And that does mean uh, becoming a place where young talent first chooses to stay and then sees it as an appealing option. If they go off to college, we want them back. So we're going to start targeting them with cool messages about Bob the Fork, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and other things that are quality of place <laughs> opportunities so we can do better at getting students to come back. Because right now, I don't know every data point for right here in this geography, but in Southwest India is a, is a larger area. We do pretty well at getting our students that go to USI and University of Evansville and Oakland City to stay put. We don't do well at all at getting students that go off to IU or Purdue or Western Kentucky or any of those places to come back. So it's an easy opportunity for us, and we're going to be very focused Can on Can I that. just tell you one, you know, one way to almost ensure if you know a college student who's going somewhere else, the best way? Offer them an internship. No kidding. 60 to 80% of those who do an internship will stay at that company. They'll see the possibility. So that's in the control of chamber that's members. You bet. And you don't have to be a big, yes, yeah, big round of applause, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You don't have to be a 500 person company to have right. an intern. I had an intern when I had my own business in mm -hmm. Evansville years yes. ago. And it was a great way to, for me to get the help I needed as a young consultant, but for that young woman who was at IU to see the opportunities of being in business. And there's no, you, you can't possibly find a better way to hire people than to hire them as an intern. You get to road test them, you get to guide them, you get to say, now is a good time for you to go get a credential. There's a lot of an employer can do, whether they're big or small, in building this relationship with our students right out of the box. So we're very focused on that. Similarly, we're very focused on a couple of the things that you referenced. So I'm going to follow your lead there. Uh, and that is uh, household incomes in our region. Because in southwest Indiana, more than half of our households are making, are bringing home a, a household income that's barely enough to, to bring them out of poverty. And so we've got a lot of work to do as a region 
to help salaries to creep up. Now don't panic, I'm not saying you have to raise your wages. I get the dynamic and I'm talking to the employer community about this conversation. But it does mean, as we encourage businesses to come in, that we're looking for those that can help to freshen up that average wage. So there's a lot of work we need to do if we're going to um, set our families up to be able to be more self-sustaining and to help really build the region. Well, and as you hire people who can bring the productivity and exactly. skills to raise your profits as a company, you can pay them more, and that's why those go together. At Ivy Tech, we actually measure what our students earn once they leave. It, we started measuring three years ago what our, what our students were earning, and we decided median wage was our bar. We wanted our students yep. to earn above median wage. That first year was 38%. Mm -hmm. The next year was 41%. And this past year, 47% are earning above median wage one year, within one year of graduation. Our goal is at 80% of our students. Right. And we're pushing them to those high wage, high value jobs mm -hmm. in, this, in our communities so that we can raise Absolutely. those family wages. And those jobs are out there. They're, they're out there in every one of our counties. So I think that our challenge is to make sure our workforce can, can be ready to take those jobs. Uh, or they'll migrate elsewhere, and we can't let that happen. Uh, so we've, we've got some very specific efforts, and um, I'll be the first to say, we don't work just in Vandenberg County. We think our region is wherever the workforce is. So we are just as interested in success in Spencer, Franklin, Owensboro, but you know, in all this river that, that we call home, because our workforce migrates back and forth across the river, they drive back and forth among counties. So how we uh, get our region to, you know, basically take our responsibility and, and, and you know, surge ahead of this, uh, I think on our own, is, is a great opportunity for us as a region. So I appreciate the chance to have this conversation with Sue and with all of you tonight, because I think um, the chamber is never going to create a job. You know, we are a collection of uh, enablers. You all create the jobs, you all need the jobs, you create productivity, we're here to help. And so we are very careful about um, how we can be supportive of employers and of our, and of our great nonprofits. because I'm just going to take a second and say the employer community only can thrive when we've got a healthy, uh, well-supported, professional nonprofit community that's part of the mix because that's what makes our communities work so well. So I think that uh, this this is the kind of um, evening that I'm really interested in. I'm, I bet we're going to have some good questions. Yeah. I'm going to plant one seed and then we'll open up the questions. So I think I shared this with you, Tara, when we saw each other a week ago, that in the Louisville metro area, they have founded the first by state Workforce Investment Board, we call it a WIB, but it's a Workforce Investment Board, and it's on the Louisville side, and it's on the one Southern Indiana side where our Sellersburg campus is. They're the first one in the nation. I would challenge this community, because Spencer County, mm -hmm. all of Southwest Indiana would benefit greatly Absolutely. if they considered Owensboro and Henderson, you're really one mm -hmm. metropolitan yeah. area, two sides mm -hmm. of one great river. To think about what you could do, how we could empower this area, and, and see the strengths of That's a great Cabal. challenge. It's a challenge. And the fact that it's been done, I'm going to say up river, we can't let up river get ahead of us. So. Governor's workforce cabinet <laughs> just approved that about three months ago, so you can be right on it. All right, with that, do we want to open up for any questions you have? Questions? Easier or hard? Easy or hard. Borrow your mic again. Yeah. I'm so sorry. We'll share. We'll, we'll share. share. Yeah. I can probably project across the room anyway. <laughs> I, we have a very inquisitive crowd. I do know that. And a challenging crowd at times. Um, oh, I see that. Yeah. And going straight up right now. Sure, if you want to. Ms. Valerie Schmidt. <laughs> I love it. Leaving the charge. We can just hear <laughs> that. Columbus, Ohio, and then I went to Iowa, 
and so I've been, driven through Indy from forever, <laughs> for as long as old as I am. I just assumed 69 was done when I moved here. And I got to what do you mean it's not done yet? <laughs> because you're right. Everyone thinks of Bloomington, and they kind of you know. That's we, southern Indiana. We need to punch above our weight, folks. We've got to be, we're the real southern Indiana. Uh, but to answer that question, that is a challenge. One of the reasons that we don't move workforce in easily, and a lot of our employers will tell us that, is because the housing is not the right standard, it's not in the right location, and it doesn't meet what young talent wants. So we have, in the housing space, we need more affordable housing, we need more housing for all of our economic spectrum, but we also need to be a lot more sensitive to housing that is appealing and walkable, doesn't have to be expensive, but it has to meet the expectations of the millennial world because whether you know it or not, there's more millennials in the workforce right now than, than there are us. And so we are no longer the majority. The reality is millennials are the majority in our workforce. So we gotta just live with that, folks. So to answer your question, one of the things that the South Carolina Chamber is really uh, pushing for is to uh, organize and get financed a, a, a regional housing study so uh, to identify the opportunities. And that means a study that we can hand to developers. Because to your point, until we bring a few developers in that have experience everywhere, elsewhere, to challenge our local developers. We want our local developers to do the work, but we gotta, we gotta push it along a little bit. So I think that we do need to do almost a market demand study, and we've kind of identified that as a priority for the region. Because that won't solve the problem, but it will get started. Because I do think that, um, you know, Getting some developers a little more comfortable taking the risk means giving them credible information. And lots of times they just don't have that. Yeah. What else? What else, folks? What's, what, what's the hard part? Yeah. You want to hear about bridge? I'll tell you anything you want to know about getting the 69 bridge built. I'll tell you something on that. I won't be invited. Anyway, I think most of us are aware of what some of the things are needed. Like, one of the school corporations. Venture meeting there where we viewed some of the students going through trades, learning the things that they're finally bringing back into high school, so that those people can think about saying, but we also need business. Because without business, you can't put those people in there and they'll go somewhere else. So, what's that opportunity to look at that? You know, I would just say it, it is the chicken and the egg, but you can't not invest in the education. You may lose some people for a few years when they go away, but I know we've seen our little town of Ferdinand a lot of success of bringing talent back. If you continue to be a community that cares about things, that has pride in itself, that wants to punch above yep. its weight, yep. um, but to not, we can't ever use the excuse, well, they might go, if they get a college education, they might go away. Well, they might. But the worst thing is if they don't get a college education right. and they stay. You know, that, you know, it's really, what's the alternative? So we have to take that, and then I come back to it. We have to then nurture them back. And this is where I'll give Jim, my husband, some real credit. He's done a really nice job of staying in touch. Mark Stezik's done that, staying in touch with the young people that we've met as they go away. And every opportunity of encouraging those people mm -hmm to come back when the opportunity yep. arises. And you'd be surprised how many are working from home. So these may be software engineers that are working out of home or app developers yep. or in jobs that they can do that. So, and then once you get three or four or five, all of a sudden they're starting a business, mm -hmm. they're attracting right. other people in, so it can snowball. But I wish it were an easy one for one. It's not gonna be that easy one for one, but we have to invest in our young people. And I'm going to deceive you with one other program. If you've never heard of um, the Wabash, I don't even know what they call it, Wabash Promise. Wabash yeah. Promise. Probably 10 years ago, if you want to talk about one of the lowest socioeconomic communities in the state, it was Wabash, Indiana. Um, and the YMCA president, along with the school superintendent of Wabash, I think it was Consolidated Schools, I'm kind of sure of that. Uh, anyway. They got together and they developed the Wabash Promise, which said for every kindergartner, they would get a 529 account and $25 that was gifted by their local bank. And they had, they got their picture taken on the first day of school that says, I'm going to college. 
every year they took those kids to the local oh, university. So they went to Manchester yeah. University, which was just outside their city limits. And they would take a thousand, they would take all classes and they'd be coming in with their banner on the class of 2043 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But what a great way to demonstrate the, com the community's commitment to young kids who came from very low income families. And the surprising thing, not really surprising, but you would hope it happens, is that many different people gave to those accounts. Aunts, uncles, neighbors, friends. So it didn't happen. Maybe the family never could put more money in directly, but grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle could. And guess what signal that sends to those young people that they are college material. They can go someday. Yeah, some of them are going to be 21st century scholars. Guess what? They're more likely that their families will sign them up as 21st century scholars when they think they have a college future in their mind. So anyway, that's a program the chamber can think about. It's not expensive. It's one more that's on Jim's bucket list for Forest Park and Du Bois County. But it, those are the kind of things that send a really strong signal to the community about what you value, what's important to the community. I might just add another thought on the we need more businesses because uh, we clearly think we do. And you know, this is a manufacturing center. Uh, you know, Southwest Indiana and that whole river corridor we've got, it's a pretty powerful manufacturing center. And advanced manufacturing is very much a part of our future. As is health, as health and life sciences. So if you look at mm -hmm. where the money's coming from and where the jobs are in our greater region, they're in health and life sciences and manufacturing and ag and forestry. You know, mm -hmm. the, but those are big employers, but the value add, the, the, the multiplier effect, if you will, is coming from manufacturing and, and health and life sciences. So some of the things that uh, Kathy mentioned, um, the work you're doing with the ISDBC, the Small Business Development Center, is a great way to support um, young businesses. Young businesses and small businesses are not one and the same. Young businesses are those entrepreneurial opportunities that might spin out and become the next Amazon or the next whatever. And we in Indiana need to do all we can to help young businesses get started and be supported here. So that is something we can be doing in every part of the state because thanks again to the work that's been done by a lot of you in this room, you've got a shot at having real broadband. Um, you know, with broadband, you've got that opportunity. Of course, of course, of course. I appreciate that. Fair note is top our new champion um, in the past couple of years for broadband. In the two years she's been here, we have had a huge voice uh, with championing the broadband um, efforts, yeah. right, Jean? Yes. And uh, we I, we would be remiss without thanking PSC and yeah. um, Southern Indiana Power for a phenomenal partnership to help bring that 15 million, almost yeah. 15 million, uh, to the Spencer uh, Perry area. Yeah. So well, and look at now coronavirus. Look at the schools that are doing e-learning days. Right. Uh, we delay classes a week and we'll go to that at Ivy Tech as well. Those students are going to be at home. They have to be able yep. to learn. And, they have, and we want those small businesses to be able to yep. work mm -hmm. out of their homes or in their communities. To, to, so yeah, broadband is incredibly important. Yep. And keep fighting that fighting. Good way to go, PSC. Southern Indiana Power. And Southern Indiana Power. Tara, I have a question for you regarding uh, They've been talking about like agricultural areas mm -hmm. trying to get the broadband up and going up yeah. in Du Bois County. Mm -hmm. And is that part of the USDA program to do that? Or what is that since you were talking about farm to table while ago? Well, in Indiana, one of the options we have is there's a um, some funds that are available thanks to um, paying off some, some bonds on the, uh, on the turnpike up north that's available for grants, I think the grant time has just passed, but I'm pretty sure the Boys County is in it, um, to, to get uh, some seed money from, through the state to help them prompt that. Um, USDA does some work in that area as well, but I think the most ready opportunity for us is through the state's uh, economic support. The couple of the text right now. I know. <laughs> uh, and you know, and, I'm not, and our, legacy, our legacy folks are great partners too, let me be clear. But there's a place where it's not economically efficient, and that's where the state is, is really giving us an opportunity to step in and, and move this along. So if you're not paying attention to where it's needed, jump in. 
Speaking of moving us along, I think that, I think that, was, our, that was the hook for my husband's famous last words on those Sunday evenings. And in conclusion, right? <laughs> uh, thank you, ladies. You all enjoyed that? Yeah. But before I came this evening, I was hearing about, you know, all the sad things you hear on TV. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to get something for them that is really in high demand, that everybody's looking for, that is very hard to get. So pick that up, okay? It's something that you definitely can use and that everybody wants. There you go.
almost feel like the end of the world is coming. I hate to say that. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big deal when we can't even go watch our boys play basketball and, and uh, NCAA and, and uh, gosh, the NBA was all affected. But anyway, um, please let us know changes that are happening in your uh, workplace, in your school place, in your, in your pocket so that we can help community uh, be more informed. Do you want to shameless plug? Kathy wants to please the people who got awards tonight, please meet over in that corner, Kathy, that corner, yeah. over there, yeah. over there, where Don Steen is, <laughs> for a picture for the paper, okay, please? We thank you, God bless you, be safe. And thank